Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, we are back with another episode of the Broken Integra. Uh, if you're new to the channel, this is my 1995 Acura Integra. Uh, a little eBay turbo kit, piston and rods, really simple setup with some aftermarket cams. Um, this head is new to me, and I don't believe that the valve lash is correct because uh, this cylinder is not firing. But if the valve lash is wrong and it's barely keeping those valves open, it won't seal up and it won't have enough compression to actually fire. So what I'm going to do is pull the uh, valve cover back off, um, get that off, and get some uh, feeler gauges and check the valve lash on every single one and basically do a valve adjustment. Uh, I should have done that in the beginning, but I don't know, sometimes you get lucky and you don't have to. So going to do that here in a second and uh, also I need to pull the manifold back off and change around I broke a uh, exhaust stud on the bottom when I was tightening down the manifold you know fun stuff so uh, hang hang loose and we'll uh, we'll be getting some stuff done hopefully we're getting this thing running good by the end of this video All right, I don't know if you can see me, but um, I, now that I got the valve cover off, to check the valve lash, uh, what you're gonna wanna do is roll the motor over, and you're gonna wanna be um, where the technical term is like the the point, the point's gonna be, want, you're gonna want that facing up. You're gonna want uh, what I call the, um, the butt of the cam to be facing down on the bottom. So I'm gonna just roll this over. And yeah, it looks like uh, looks like I probably don't have the clearance. I'm gonna go grab my feeler gauges and I'll show you what to look for. All right, so my feeler gauges are all rusted up. This is not gonna give me a good reading, so I'm gonna have to go to Advance and uh, get me a new set. They're literally like rusted together. Um, I probably could clean them apart, and but I'd rather just have a new set. They're really cheap, and um, yeah. So I'll be right back. All right, so I'm back and I got some new feeler gauges. What you're gonna wanna look for is the um, 0 .004 uh, inch or 0 .102, that's this one right here. That's for the intake. And then for the exhaust, it's 0 .007 uh, or 0 .178 millimeters. Um, you're gonna want uh, you know, the pointy side of the cam, the lobe of the cam to be up. And then, let's see here, I'll just show you what it's like. You just stick the intake into there and that should go in um, now you notice this is the cylinder that was misfiring and um, check it out that won't go in that means that this cam is still pressing down on the rocker which is leaving that valve open so it's bleeding off compression it can't make a full like an actual cycle so that's why this um, this cylinder was misfiring so if we go to put it in there it won't fit in that one um, let me uh, probably got a roll Okay, see it will go in between this one, uh, won't go in between that one. I need to roll those so it's actually um, facing up, but that just gives you a really good idea right there, right off the bang. Like, that cylinder was misfiring, and look, those valves are being held wide open. So, um, I'll show you how to actually adjust it. it. All it takes is a 12 millimeter wrench and a flathead screwdriver. So, let me go try to find one of those around here. Good night. I'll be back in 45 minutes. Alright, so you're going to need a 12 millimeter wrench and a flathead screwdriver. The flathead screwdriver is going to be turning this area in the middle and your 12 millimeter wrench is going to be loosening these. Um, I did already break these loose off the camera because they are were extremely tight. Um, way tighter than just hand tight. I had to put a breaker bar on them. They do not need to be that tight by any means. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this loose and then um, I believe, yeah, I'm going to do half a turn, and you can actually, you don't even have to tighten it up, you can grab your feeler gauges again, and then see where you're at, and we're getting closer, let's see here, let's turn it some more, that's another big old half turn, normally you don't, you don't work that much at a time, okay, so now, you see that, we're loose, um, now I can work my way back up slowly, so I'm going to do a, a half right there, 
Okay, I got a, I got a slight drag. It's a little loose for my liking. I like it to be like a, about a heavy drag. Not too much, so we're, we're right in this area. Somewhere right about, maybe there. Okay, so this is kind of something you gotta, you learn the feel of. But when you stick, it'll, it goes in fairly easily, and then on the way out, it kind of grabs it, if you know what I mean. Um, you definitely want it to go in easy, though. So that means it's not actually touching the valve. So this is what a properly adjusted valve will look like, and kind of, you know, like it's got a little bit of drag, and then an improperly one, you know, it won't even, it won't even go in. And if it's, like, super loose, I mean, like, you'll be able to tell it's, it won't even grab onto it. It'll just, like, fall in there, and then it'll slide out. So... That's how you do one. I'm going to go through and do all of these and then hopefully put it all back together and show you all a good running car. Okay, so I have adjusted all the valves. Uh, by far, this cylinder right here was the worst. All four valves needed an adjustment. Almost every other cylinder had at least one valve that needed adjustment. So that goes to show you who knows how many times I've put a motor together and not do a valve adjustment and I'm bleeding off some of my, uh, some of my power, so to speak, because if you have a valve that's even open just a little tiny bit, it bleeds off compression. And um, if it's only a slight amount, you may not notice driving, but you would notice um, on the dyno. And uh, I've had a couple cars that did not perform on the dyno, and I'm starting to think back and wonder maybe if I, I just did a valve adjustment, it would tighten it up a little bit more. But um, I'm going, getting ready. I'm going to throw the, uh, the valve cover back on and just start it up. I am sweating. It is like another 100 plus degree day out here. Hopefully, cross your fingers for me, this takes care of that little miss or skip, that misfire we had. So, that'd be nice. Alright guys, it's all buttoned up up there. Let's uh, start it up together. Oh god, oh, oh. Windshield wipers are on. Okay, neutral. Oh, there we go. That sounds so much better. Yes. yes. Okay guys, I'm not gonna let it run very long because I still have not filled up the radiator with um, any water or coolant or anything. Um, let's see, hold on. Okay, air fuel ratio gauge is working. See right there. It's jumping, jumping all around, but that's to be expected because these cams are probably changing how the car runs quite a bit, I would imagine. Uh, I just wanted to, my goal for today before I went to work was to get this all back together um, and do that valve adjustment and get this thing running like 100%. Or well, running on all four cylinders at least. So uh, I am super stoked about that. Uh, I'm going to go rip this footage off of the memory card, throw it up, and hopefully you'll be seeing this on YouTube um, before the end of today. So um, just super excited to keep up the uh, keep up the flow and keep before you know it, this car will be running and driving. So if I keep up this kind of pace, man, I could I could fix the car all the time. I could break it all the time. Well, I already do that. So thank you guys for watching. This is Brandon on Motor Nubs and. I'll see you tomorrow. I think uh, tomorrow I'm going to be pulling the plugs out, gapping those, filling the radiator up with uh, water or antifreeze. Um, I'm just going to go back over everything before we have to go to the dyno, maybe like a pre-dyno checklist. Um, I also, I noticed I was low on power steering fluid. I think I have a leak. I'm going to take that power steering line off and see if maybe it has a uh, busted O-ring. Some people were telling me if I delete this power steering, I can get a tensioner that holds tension on the front side of this timing belt. Um, I really, I'd like to have another tensioner on the timing belt, but man, I really like power steering. It's nice to have, especially if you're trying to, you know, drive the car in any kind of traffic. But I don't know, this car may not turn into being a daily driver, so might not be able to do that. So, well, I'm going to quit rambling. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.